Hey guys, it's Brie. I hope you're having a fantastic reading week. Let's go ahead and talk about The Call by Peter O'Gwen. I first heard of this book because I was actually watching Peter O'Gwen on a panel at Worldcon. He was talking about asexuality in YA with a bunch of really other fantastic people like Marika uh, Nykamp, Laura Lamb, just fantastic panel overall. And so I was interested in picking up this book, especially when I started hearing that it was really actually very scary um, because it is a YA book. It's p uh, published by Scholastic in the US, which is typically really early YA, kind of middle grady books. And so I found the the idea of a truly scary um, of a truly scary middle grade book fascinating, especially uh, one that incorporates fairies. Um, <laughs> it's been kind of my experience with fantasy lately, um, particularly among the YA fantasy I've read, uh, not excluding, of course, adult fantasy. Adult fantasy does this all the time too, but that we treat fairies as kind of like these benevolent creatures as opposed to terrifying, which a lot of the stories of the Fae initially were. Uh, Peter O'Gwen sets this book up to begin with, um, really focusing on the idea of his world building. O'Gwen has built a world where Ireland has been isolated through these like absolutely impenetrable fog. And so they know that the fairy realms are coming closer and no one in Ireland can get off of the island. Um, <laughs> it kind of becomes this this horrifying captured situation and then the fae start taking children and hunting them. Uh, the children are gone for three minutes at a time and when they come back, they come back terribly deformed. The fae, of course, have the power to kind of mesh flush as they will. So there'll be children who come back and their limbs are rearranged or children who come back and like their head is in their stomach. Really truly terrifying kind of situations that Ogwen does not shy away from. Right? And of course the Fae are livid. Humanity has banished them from our world into this really desolate gray place where they have to live for eternity. The story follows a character named Nessa who, as a child, suffered from polio because they can't get to the outside world, of course. Things like vaccines become increasingly difficult to come by and she was just not vaccinated. She became exposed and lost the use, basically, of her, uh, of her legs. She can walk, kind of, but with very, very great effort. And um, her whole life, she has known that she's doomed the Fae will take her and they will hunt her down and they sh she won't be a challenge to them. And so she's shipped off to this college where they train the kids to survive as best they can in this like three minute hunt, right? It's three minutes for us, but it can be hours, days on the other side of uh, the kind of Fae border. And everyone thinks she's gonna die. Nessa thinks she's gonna die. And she starts to train, but uncovers uh, after a couple of years that there is a greater mystery going on. I really liked this story. Um, it, it's set up, it follows Nessa primarily as the main character. And every time a child from her school is taken into the Feyland, it follows them specifically and the hunt that they are taking part in. And so you're seeing her story and her watching her friends disappear and then the horror of her friends' deaths. The few that come back alive are just dramatically changed. And occasionally that is a, a plot point for the story. Um, Nessa's best guy friend comes back and is just able to do terrible things because he's been physically changed by the Fae. Uh, one of her enemies comes back and is hiding something, very clearly hiding something. Um, and it's just a lot of insidiousness. 
I think it's also very atmospheric. You feel like you could walk in through this story and see it. Um, I really like that there's kind of a body horror aspect, even though I'm not a body horror type person. I think he uses that aspect very, very well. And I think because Egwene doesn't really shy away from it and because he's using kind of fairies in their old school sense, right? Just these immensely powerful beings who are not necessarily um, feeling very benevolent towards humanity, that he's able to create a world really that's that's scary. Of course there's a lot of drama within the school as well because it's a bunch of like 15 year olds locked up together being told they're gonna die um, unless they can fight. And so there are some really vicious characters and it's not always clear that they're gonna get their comeuppance. There's a real sense of desperation throughout the story. I think that that was really well done. And I really like Nessa as a character. I think she's she's kept her nose to the grindstone because of course following the rules and training as hard as she can is going to be the only way she survives. And initially that kind of feels like a goody two-shoes vibe, but it becomes clear very quickly that she's got a much more analytical side and she's much more clever um, than she might otherwise be had she not gone into this with a death sentence, really. It was also really refreshing to have a character who has to work in spite of a limitation. Um, seeing kind of this setup where the main character has limited mobility and their life is heavily dependent on their ability to be mobile, I think is very interesting and very refreshing. Um, I do think that the, the biggest uh, boon for this story is in the world building. I think Gwyn spent a lot of time really imagining what this world would have been like. I would have liked to see some more character development, mostly because there are characters that I really liked that kind of didn't get a ton of time spent on them, or characters that are in the story really tangentially who will play, um, who play a part in either helping or hurting Nessa. Um, where I would have liked to see a little bit of their backstory, but really I don't have a ton of complaints about this, particularly since it's middle grade. I just really enjoyed reading this. I found it to be a very quick read, really engaging, and again, very atmospheric. If you've read The Call, let me know what you thought of it. I would love to get your opinion. You guys know the drill. Comment, like, and subscribe. I hope you're having a fantastic reading week, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.